Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to Transcendent as Fuck with Aina Spirit Walker. Here we talk about all things metaphysical, intuition, energy healing, animal communication, trauma, basically all the challenges and the blessings of being a spiritual being in a meat sack. My name is Aina Spirit Walker, and I am an animal communicator, a healer, a medicine woman, life coach, and I've been doing this for 25 years. Today's guest is Denise Mange. Denise, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me here today. And I just love your energy. It's so authentic. <laughs> That's probably why you do so well connecting with animals. And yes, love. Authenticity is everything. They pick up on that. That's so true. That's so true. Denise, can you, thank you, by the way, can you please tell us what is it that you do? So I am a certified dog trainer, a pet intuitive, a pet numerologist, and I like to call myself an overall pet groupie. I'm the founder of Pet Prana, which is a brand that's all about a mindful approach to training, living, and connecting with our animal companions. Beautiful. Awesome. I love it. I can't wait to dive into our subject today, you guys, is self-help for pet's sake. I, I'm Tell us, Denise, what is our self-help and how is that related to our pets? And so this is such a cool concept that we get to, you know, talk about and touch upon, but it's something that as pet parents, I think a lot of us are already kind of tapped into and attuned to and, and have figured out for ourselves. But as we enter this new vanguard of pet guardianship, you know, we, we came from a place where it was all dominance based and then we moved into positive reinforcement, which is great, which is all about, you know, collaborative dog training. And now the dog training industry kind of take, took an, an additional step and they've acknowledged the importance of mental stimulation, right? We have dog puzzles, dog toys. We understand the importance of training our pets, not only for them to understand the rules of the house, but to kind of feel accomplished and, and feel confident confident in their energy. Where we're moving to as, you know, pet guardians right now is we're asking for more of that energetic connection now. So beyond knowing how to do traditional training, beyond having all those aspects of, you know, and toys for mental stimulation, now we're talking about conscious pet parenting. Mm -hmm. How does our work with them, our lessons, our good times, our bad times, how do those translate to personal growth? And so that to me is really what it is, you know, when we talk about self-help for pet's sake, it's that notion then is that notion of when we kind of acknowledge different patterns in our lives, when we vibe higher, so can our animal companions. Beautiful. That's so true. So how can, how does this apply to, is this for people who are just spiritually aware or what, what are the components of this? So it goes beyond, right? I think as pet parents, mm -hmm. we're all incredibly sensitive and empathic. And the irony is I'm the last person who should be talking about this, right? Growing <laughs> up, we never had a pet. Uh, we grew up in an apartment building in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So I didn't have any dogs, any cats, any traditional pets growing up, but I still was incredibly connected with animals, as I'm sure so many people here, you know, listening to your podcast were as well. So if you have that connection, if you connect with animals, if you feel empathic towards animals, this philosophy works for you, right? Because we know that our animals, whether they're in the wild or our animal companions, have messages for us. They help reflect back energy going in our lives. If, say, we're feeling a little underwhelmed or, you know, we're lacking some courage, a lion can pop into our, our you know, awareness and we, we're remembered of those traits and we can mm -hmm. embody the energy of lion. So mm -hmm. if you're an animal lover or you're a pet guardian, this philosophy applies because at its core, it is learning to communicate with animals. It's animal communication at its finest. And as mm -hmm. pets, we've learned that if our animal companions are barking at us, if our animal companions have separation anxiety, if our animal companions are reactive on leash to other dogs and barking aggressively, there's probably an aspect of ourselves that has a similarity. <clears throat> there. Um, so in any capacity with animals, they're here to teach us. It's so true. And I'm so grateful that you bring this up too, because I, you know, I've been doing this 25 years and I'm at a point in my career now where when people have animals with, I work with a lot of dogs with anxiety, for example, I only work with them if the human is willing to acknowledge and work with me and on their anxiety as well, because in my experience, energetically, 
Um, it's a, only a Band-Aid if I just help the dog. It's only a Band-Aid because it is mutually linked to the human as well. Because um, animals in the wild do not have anxiety. Yeah. It's that's, not part of their nature. It's the human beings. That's absolutely true. And I love <laughs> that. And it can be as simple as explaining, you know, when I was working with, um, you know, dogs and their pet parents, it was as simple as explaining that our dogs pick up on our energy. You know, mm -hmm. when we come home from a long day and we're stressed, our dog picks up on that immediately and knows what to do. Um, mm -hmm. Or firstly, they might not be soothing us. They might also kind of pick up on that stress and kind of dial up some of their behaviors. So the way right. that they manifest it can be different, but they're definitely responding to our energy. And what I found is, you know, so I mentioned that I never had a pet growing up and then, you know, I loved animals. I was always very intuitively connected, but as so many of us, I pursued a traditional career and I went to work in advertising for about 10 years. If anybody's worked in advertising on Madison Avenue in New York City after 10 years, you are spent. It's literal dog years, right? 10 years is like beyond a career in advertising. Wow. So I left and I said, you know, if there's something I would love to do with my life, it'd be working with animals. And I'm in New York City. Why don't I open a doggy daycare? And I figured if, I, if I'm going to open a doggy daycare, I need to learn about pet behavior because I didn't have the benefit of growing up with a dog. So right. that's where I got certified as a traditional obedience trainer specializing in positive reinforcement. And part of the certification was working with pets and their humans doing practicum hours one on one. And once I started doing that, my goodness, did my world blow open. Um, you know, it just became very clear that a doggy daycare was not for me. I really love digging deeper into that relationship between pets mm -hmm. and their pets. And so, you know, I'd work with them and I'd start observing that, wow, I've got a lot of dogs that have unleashed reactivity. I mean, I know it's New York City, but it's just dog after dog after dog. And I started realizing that as I was speaking to the pet parent and asking them about their routine, the dog's routine, there were a lot of similarities. People were between jobs. Maybe they were between relationships. And I was like, wow, interesting. These are all issues of the first chakra, safety, mm -hmm feeling in control, feeling predictability in your world, feeling connected to yourself and your environment. And so after working with hundreds of clients, I came up with this roadmap called Translating Beyond Your Pet's Behavior. And what it does is it links up common pet behaviors with our human chakras so that we can better understand our motivation, our energy, and our pet's motivation in displaying these behaviors. Because to your point, if we as humans are not shifting our mindset, shifting our energy, shifting through patterns, it's not fair to ask our animal companions to shift through their behavior. They can't, they won't, because they're reflecting and they're picking up on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that has been a really exciting tool that I can use with my clients um, when we're working with our animal companions. Sometimes we know we're energetically affecting our pets, but we can't quite pinpoint what habit. But when we use the chakras, being especially that we have the same seven major chakras with our pets linked to the same themes, we get a jumping off point. Um, so unleash reactivity, first chakra, themes of safety, security, grounded, um, you know, predictability. With separation anxiety that you mentioned, whether it's separation anxiety or anxiety more generally, I've matched, I've matched that up with themes of the second chakra, which has to do with balancing our own needs, feeling worthy, um, that fear of separation and loss and longing all kind of contributes back to our pets displaying separation anxiety or anxiety more generally back to us. And so it goes. That totally makes sense. So when you start working with someone, Denise, um, what does that look like? Mm. Where do you start? Yeah, so I love it. It depends on who I'm working with, right? It's really important, and you know this as a life coach and someone who's been dealing with energy for the first, you know, for the past quarter of a, a mm. yeah, my math yeah. is correct. Uh, you know, it's all about meeting people where they are. So it can be as simple as saying to a pet parent, you know, you really want to be the energy you want to see. So if you're on leash and you're anxious or nervous or not feeling grounded, take a moment to really take a deep breath, ground in, body language counts. So it can be as simple as be the energy you want to see, you want to see to something where if somebody's 
knows me from a podcast like this and they're like, I'm all in, give it to me, you know, straight. One of my favorite starting points is pulling the numerology of the pet's name and the human's name so that we can see, you know, people's tendencies, the lessons we share, where we're here to complement each other. And we start from there. That's beautiful. Pet numerology. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. And that was that an interesting one. Yeah, that, that? that was an interesting one that kind of crept in on me because I was doing traditional training. And one month I kept getting dogs with that separation anxiety, dogs who just did not want to be in the crate. And it mm -hmm. just happened that many of their, their names were Leo. And so it was a rainy day and I was in between training sessions. So I dipped into a spiritual bookstore and it was insane. This woman with raven hair, just super tall and thin and very otherworldly, just walked up to me with a book on numerology. And she said, you need this. And I was like, Ooh. <laughs> and so I looked up the numerology of Leo and turns out Leo vibrates at the overall vibration of five, which is the freedom loving adventurer. So I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, interesting. So their motivation for separation anxiety isn't anxiety itself or that longing for Leo. It's the fear of missing out. It's the FOMO. Mm -hmm. They want to be with yeah. the adventure. Um, mm -hmm. so we can, when we better understand the motivation, then we can train them in a more effective way. A dog suffering from separation anxiety because they're scared of being alone is very different from a dog who just wants to be out in the world and experience everything. So that's why for me, pet numerology is a great tool to kind of add and layer into this kind of work. That's so amazing. And I really appreciate that you're bringing this up too, because um, the, no matter who you work with, you guys, those of you who are in the audience, it's really important to have somebody that has many layers, many tools in the tool belt. I use the same phrase um, because like this never one and done for anyone or any animal. And it's really important to really check things from different angles. And um, again, sorry, I have a gnat like flying around. He's like going to go up my nose any second. Those of you who are watching, I'm so sorry. But anyway, yeah, I, we don't know. We don't want to see that on camera. So I'm just going to shoo him away. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to look up Nat Totem. That's that's right? my message. I'm going to have to look that up. Note to self. Um, so <laughs> I've had clients too, and probably not people who come to you because they hopefully already know what you offer. But I've had clients come to me and say, but I'm, you know, I'm fine on the leash, you know, like I'm not nervous. I'm not, I'm not reactive, but my dog's reactive. And it's interesting because there are some human beings who still think that, you know, so long as we have a smile on our face, you know, everything's fine. And for me, it's the total opposite. Um, I all I I also connected with animals when I was a child, and I actually trusted hum, uh, do, animals, all animals, way more than humans because humans would do that very thing. You'd ask them how they're doing, they'd say fine, they'd have a smile on their face, but their energy was just like so angry or whatever. Animals can feel that, you guys. Animals can totally feel that. Absolutely. You can't bullshit the animals. And I love that you brought up that example because that happens, right? We don't realize how deeply our energy affects our animal companions. So even if, if that human is okay on leash, right? Energetically, does she mean it? I mean, she might be fine on leash, feeling good about the walk, but in her mind, she's got a big project and she's feeling insecure about a promotion. Is she going to get that promotion or not? So if, mm -hmm. you know, you still are having an animal that's reactive on leash, I'd be like, what are your triggers? How do you deal with your triggers? Where do you feel safe? Where do you feel insecure? Not only with your animal companion, but more broadly in your life, in your career, in your relationships and foundational aspects of who you are. So there's always that opportunity to go a little deeper and ask yourself deeper questions. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yes. And let's always look at these as opportunities to learn and grow and not challenges. Yeah. So <laughs> that that's, mindset. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. important. Yes, we put that we put that in perspective, even though I call them challenges of the podcast, but we want to keep things in perspective because really the universe is happening for us, not to us. And all the things that are coming into our vision are things that we need to walk through you guys so let's keep that in mind and there's themes right we're always dealing mm -hmm. with themes in our life so even if we think we've solved it in one aspect of our life you know there might be echoes in a bigger way that help us just transcend and transform and really propel us on our path of personal growth and that's one thing that our animal companions do is they mm -hmm. help you know there are guides there are little ascension guides they propel us and lead us along that path 
Yes, that's beautiful. And yeah, that that's been my experience too. And I, I've I admit sometimes I think I'm I'm done with something and then it floats back into my into my life and I'm like, damn it, I thought I checked that box. Come on. <laughs> oh no, we need to go deeper this time, honey. You're not done. That Absolutely. box is not checked. And so I'd love to share if you're okay with it, four questions, right? Please. Because Sometimes these things do pop back in our back up in our lives. And we're like, what is going on? Or maybe my animal companion is barking at me. And I'm like, yeah. what's going on? I, I mean, I get that there's an energetic correlation, but I just don't know what it is. So I always like to encourage my pet parents to ask themselves four questions and kind of go through this mini meditation. I always ask them to close their eyes and think of a presenting issue. And it might be barking, it might be accidents, or it might be something that they really love that their pet does, like a moment of snuggle and connection. But usually this works really well if you're kind of trying to figure out what's going on with your pet's behavior that you want to shift. When you think of the presenting issue, the first question I ask people is what emotions come up for you and where in your body, right? The second question, once they've kind of had a second to identify and tap into that, is where else in your life do you experience those similar emotions? And does that trigger any memories or past experiences or bigger patterns that you can identify, right? So we're allowing it to kind of tap into the vibration of it and see where it's permeating our lives. Mm -hmm. The next question is, what is the belief that characterizes that experience or pattern? You know, it might be something like, oh my God, I always go through the same lessons over and over. Or it might be, I just, I've tried everything and nothing ever shifts. Um, and then the final question, which actually is a really important one to ask ourselves is once you've identified, you know, how you're feeling, where that emotion or pattern shows up in your life, what's kind of at the core so we can kind of verbalize and personify it. The final question is, are you ready to change the story? Because you know what? Sometimes we're not. Sometimes we're still working through it. We got to sit with it a little longer. But even just having the awareness of what's going on is helpful in the first step of shifting the energy. So for example, if your dog is barking at you a lot and you just feel like, oh my God, this my dog's always barking at me no matter how much exercise he gets, what I do, I'd encourage someone to take those ask themselves those four questions and they might find that the emotion they feel is frustration and they feel it in their third chakra just kind of like burning you know like a little fire and ember and they might notice that elsewhere in their life they experienced that the other day when they were in a meeting with their boss and you know there were ideas being discussed and they said something and then someone else said it two seconds later the exact same thing and everyone's like yes what he said Right. So we're like, oh, my God, that's where that frustration is. Um, the belief that characterizes it is no one ever hears me. My voice is never heard. And so if we're ready to change that story, now we can, you know, shift it. And it might be something that we're shifting because we remember as kids, we were never encouraged to speak up or we didn't feel our voice mattered. But that's the bigness of the energy that our animal companions can help us shift and transform even through just a simple action like barking at us and not letting us, you know, get away word in edgewise. Yes, that's amazing. And it, it is one of the many gifts that the animals bring us that are in our lives. And I want to just throw this caveat out too. I really appreciate that you say pet parents. I always say caretakers. I don't like the word owner. It feels very slavey to me, like really gross. So thank you for, for doing that as well. I appreciate that. Um, I also just wanted to share a quick story about um, I was thinking about a woman I had been working with uh, recently. She she had a dog with anxiety and um, she had a dog with her and her dog were on the same medication. Let's just that should that should give you the whole picture right there. They're on the same anxiety meds. That happens a lot. So um, and <laughs> she had ignored it and just sort of told herself, this is the way that my dog is. And her dog pulled a lot on the leash. She's an elderly single woman and didn't really feel the need to get help for it until she broke her foot Ooh. and was tying her dog to her walker while she was trying to take him outside and praying that he does not pull the walker out from under her. And so, you know, this is like, don't wait that long. First of all, you guys don't wait that long, but as we started working together, I gave her a simple exercise and I'm not, I'm not going to go into the details, but it was basically like, she holds a treat, waits for the response, gives the dog a treat. That was, it was a very, it's a very simple exercise. You guys, super simple. And 
she was having anxiety attacks holding the treat. Anxiety mm. attacks. Um, and what happened was she realized holding the treat was triggering um, her childhood where she the, her parents withheld a lot of basic care and basic needs for her. Mm. So just holding the treat and not giving it to her dog brought all this stuff up for her. And although it was challenging, we were able to get her through it, but she was really like, no way. Like mm -hmm. I'm just holding a dog treat. Mm -hmm. It's wow. powerful, you guys. It's dig it, into it. It is. I love it. And, and that performative love and the withholding of treats and that those run so deep because pet parents tend to be so highly empathetic and mm -hmm. and uh, have a lot of um, empathy and highly sensitive. Right. And so, you know, those things come up and that's why it's so important that not only we look at just the energy behind what's going on and be like, well, if I shift my patterns, they'll shift it too. Uh, -uh. we have to, con we have to, you know, make sure we're doing the traditional training combined with the mental stimulation for our pets and also the energetic, it's the trio, you know, without yes. one, it doesn't work. So they it balances us, right? It grounds us back into our body. It grounds us back into the 3D world, but we're able to tap into such esoteric and huge themes. Like you just explained, that's fascinating. Yeah. And the more we do it, the more, you know, I'm sure you have a ton of stories too, but it's just people don't realize what they're holding in their bodies until like something as simple as that percolates up and, and then that's actually a huge break for breakthrough and an amazing blessing. Um, and the thing that's so lovely about that is all of that was started through the pet, right? If yeah. you had just done one-on-one -on -one and been like, let's dig into your childhood. Let's talk about this. It wouldn't have had the same partnership collaboration. And she wouldn't have her pet as a companion in the experience. So, you know, as healers, um, intuitives, pet professionals, when we're working with the pets, we're always healing the humans too. It's really quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much for bringing that up. And I, so I'm wondering, what else, is there anything else that you wanted to leave us with? And we've talked about so many amazing things already. Uh, you know, I, one of the things that I, I love to encourage people and remind them of is as much as you and I are pet intuitives and, you know, we're experts in dog training or whatever our, our flavor of healing or, or gifts are, pet parents are incredibly intuitive, right? Mm -hmm. You know so much more than you give yourself credit for. So when we are working, whether you're working with a traditional dog trainer, a pet intuitive, a life coach, I always like to remember people not to give their power away. You know, the point of working with our animal companions is really to empower ourselves and remember the bigness mm -hmm. of who we are, our knowing, our wisdom, our gifts. So as you're working with your animal companion, know that you're picking up on the messages. You don't need a professional to translate the behavior. You guys have a unique bond and listen to your heart because you you are empathic, you're intuitive, you're beautiful and you're connected. And anyone who tells you you're not is just uh, not our kind of people. You're barking up the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Dog analogy, dog analogy. I love that. Denise, thank you so much for, for really talking to us about self-help for pet's sake. And I really hope that our listeners really start digging into their own energy and how can I improve so that I can improve the health and well-being of my animal? Because it does also, it's behavior and health. We haven't even touched on that, but it's all energy, you guys. It all translates differently. Okay, my love. So Denise, let me know, do you have any specials or events that you'd like to share with the audience right now? Yeah, um, I always love doing animal communication sessions because it does help to go a little deeper. And what's really cool is, you know, different animal communicators get different sorts of information. Some get, I like this toy. Others get a lot of medical intuitive information. What tends to come through most strongly for me is the human's gifts, abilities, patterns, their purpose, because when we understand those and we vibe higher, so can they. Um, so the, the readings with animal companions tend to be more about the humans and how 
how to empower and activate kind of next steps of learning for themselves. So I'm always down to do an animal communication session. And then I have a lot of on-demand dog training courses that take a mindful approach. So if anybody's interested in going deeper on a specific behavior, there's how-to videos and um, everything associated with traditional training, but then there's always going to be energetic considerations and activities to do with your animal companion. So those are evergreen. And um, I always get the opportunity to present on wonderful shows like you. So joining the newsletter is the best way to, to stay in touch. Sweet. Okay. And how can they find you? What is your website? What contact information would you like them to have? It's petprana.com. So pet being something particularly cherished and prana, the energy, the universal connection that we all share. So um, petprana.com. Okay. And whether you guys are listening to this podcast or you're watching it on YouTube, in the description section, you will have the link for Denise's information. Click on it, cut and paste it, whatever you got to do. Get yourself into this worm, woman's world because she has got a lot to share with you guys. Thank you so much, Denise, for being here on Transcendent as Fuck with Aina Spiritwalker. I really appreciate you and I love all the information you've brought to our audience. Uh, thank you for this platform and thank you for your authenticity. It just brings a smile to my face. So thank you for, for hosting all of us here. Right back at you, love. All right, you guys, check out those links and get connected with Denise.